need the Holy Spirit. Why we need the Holy Spirit. Morning, Michelle. Why we need the Holy Spirit. 40 days to a deeper encounter. We are on day five. So I'm going to begin by reading the scripture verses for today, which is um, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 37 through 39, and then 42. Okay, Acts chapter 2, 37 through 39, and 42. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and your children and to all that are far off, every one whom the Lord our God calls to him. And they held steadfastly to the apostles' teaching and fellowship and to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. All right. So I want to fill in the gap between yesterday's uh, scripture and, and today's scripture. So um, remember, this is the day of Pentecost. So it's nine o'clock in the morning and they are drunk in the spirit. I mean, it's the sober intoxication of the Lord that we talked about. So what, and the people that are there are just the faithful Jews. So um, a little probably rigid in their structure. Okay, so they're watching all these people that are filled with the Holy Spirit um, laughing and joy and speaking in different languages that they don't understand and just, you know, just this drunken, joy-filled, sober intoxication of the Spirit, all right? And so Peter is exhorting the people. So before we enter into this, when it says they heard this, so what, what's Peter doing? So Peter is exhorting them and in He's making that connection with with the prophecy of David. So he's already talked about the prophecy of Joel, and he's making the um, connection with the prophecy of David. And what I believe is connecting Jesus to David. He's making sure that these people understand what's just happened. Um, God sent Jesus, the prophesied Messiah. Um, he did all these signs, wonders, and miracles. You guys killed him, um, and... He and you crucified him, and then he rose from the dead. He he came with us for a period of time. He promised to send the Spirit, and this is the fulfillment of his promise. So he's making sure that these Jewish people understand what's just what's all just happened. So he's putting the picture together for them, and he's doing this because he is filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember, he's been hiding in the upper room for forty days, so or fifty days. So he's been. Um, you know, so he's filled with the Holy Spirit, which is what gives him the courage and the words and just this um, to be able to articulate with passion and zeal exactly what's gone on to these people who just killed Jesus. So, you know, he's done all this. And, and you know, what we call that, that's like pr the proclamation of the kingdom. And, and, and so he's he's calling people. This is this is his first preaching. So he's left the upper room. And this is the first time that Peter, who is the head of the church, goes out and does his first preaching. And, you know, this is what we call in the Catholic tradition the birthday of the church because this is the first time that he preaches. And, and um, you know, so they ask. So, you know, they're hearing this good news. They're hearing this proclamation of and, and this put together of everything that's gone on. And they're like, what do we do now? So that's where you hear when they heard this. So that's what the this was. The this is, you know, he came, you killed him. He rose from the dead. He sent the Holy Spirit. He rose from the dead to cover your sins, and, and then he sent us the Holy Spirit. Um, whew, let's see. Um, that Jesus came to you from God into, um, into the darkness of the world and the signs, wonders, and miracles that accompanied him. Um, and I guess what I want to say here is that Jesus, you know, don't forget that, that he's the new way. Um, those The Jewish people that were witnessing to all this, they had... There's so much history and tradition in their faith. Um, and Jesus just came and just blew all that out of the water. He, he was the fulfillment of so many of those prophecies that they had studied and studied and studied, but he didn't look like what they in their mind had expected him to look like. So, you know, and he sacrificed himself and that, you know, I guess the thing, it's like we call ourselves Christians today. But the followers of Jesus, the immediate followers of Jesus, didn't necessarily call themselves Christians. They said that they were following the way, like Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So they were followers of the way. 
in that those people who were following Jesus immediately, the term Christians didn't come about until after he was dead already. Um, so they were followers of the way. And remember that he, he came and he shook things up. So these people who are listening to Peter um, with the first preaching, they're a little mind blown. And, and, you know, Peter is able to put this all together for him, for them. And so, um, so they're like, what do we do? Oh my gosh, what do we do? It's like this realization of what all that they have sort of missed as it was happening. And what do they do? And he just says, repent, 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 repent. He, and he, and he sort of preaches the same as what John the Baptist, he preaches the same as what the prophets of the Old Testament had preached preach that repentance and be baptized, every one of you. So what they're offering, what Peter was offering was not just for select groups of people. Um, not just certain people can go to this. Every one of you, every one of you, repent, 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 and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I guess that makes me think about, um, you know, we repent even today, you know, there's two different things I want to say about that. Okay. So the first is when 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 the Lord removes something from us, he doesn't leave a void there. He will we we put you put something positive. He put the Holy Spirit back in that place where they had left their sin. And he does that for us today too. You know, I think about with the inner healing prayer when you walk through that with people and you're doing this renunciation of you know, wounds and sins and baggage and lies and judgments, and you're doing all this renunciation and you renounce this, but you announce the truth. So you remove something negative from your life, but then you bring in the truth of, of the Lord into that space. So there's never just left this emptiness. If what's if that emptiness is left there, that leaves room for evil to come back into that space. So we always have, you know, and and God will provide that for us. So that's just... That's what I thought about whenever um, he removes our sin with our repentance, but he doesn't leave us empty. He always gives us the Holy Spirit. And think about the Holy Spirit is the relationship of love between the Father and the Son. So he gives us that person that embodies that love and that intimacy between God the Father and, and Jesus Christ. So that's just beautiful to think that that's what he gives us to put inside um, the emptiness that's left whenever we, we repent. So we just, it's just, you know, this, it's just better. <laughs> give me more, give me more. Um, so remember that in between these, one of these verses that's left out, that's the 3000. This is the day that the 3000 were added to the numbers. And, you know, there's got to, there's that significance with that 3000. And in my mind, I just think about in Revelation, um, whenever a third were cast down, you know, so that 3,000, so this, this, we're filling up the church with, with what's been washed out. So anyway, the beginning, the birthday of our church, the birthday of our church, and they held steadfastly, um, in this journey towards eternity, you know, and that's for us today, um, because we're part of the every one of them who the Lord calls to them. We're part of this ongoing, this family, this generations, all the way from the first, from, from Peter. It's just like with our church. You know, Peter was established as the head of the church. And, you know, in the Catholic tradition, this is, this is the celebration of the Mass goes back very, very much to the Acts of the Apostles, Um where they met, there was the teaching and the fellowship, the breaking of the bread and the prayers. And so this is this is the very beginning. This is the birthday of our church and, and very uh, much the way that we still celebrate this today. And they held steadfastly to it. So um, this is the way that they just continue to be fed um, and to with the, with this new way of life, you know. They had just had their conversion experience. They had just heard the good news and they had had their conversion experience. And in order to walk out that conversion, that conversion is a decision, but then you have to walk it out from here on out. And they did that by holding steadfastly to the teaching. That's the scriptures, the, the preaching, coming together in community, 
to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. And, and that's, that's that communion. That's Jesus initiated that and they continue to do it. Jesus initiated that celebration of the Eucharist. Do this in remembrance of me. This is my body. This is my blood. This is how I'm going to stay connected with you. Even though I'm not here physically, I'm still here physically. <laughs> this is how I'm going to keep myself with you. And this is how you walk out your Christian life. Hold steadfastly. So, you know, that was given to us 2,000 years ago. Um, and that's beautiful. So, you know, these verses make you really think about your own encounter. Do you, do you remember, you know, for a lot of us probably, especially as Catholics, you know, we were baptized as infants. Um, but do you remember your personal encounter? Do you remember your conversion experience? Do you remember whenever Jesus just came into your life in such a new and profound way. And, you know, I meet, I meet people all the time who are, are baptized Christians who really probably have never had a true encounter. Um, and that, that, you know, once you've had that encounter, it grieves your hearts when other people haven't. And so, you know, as we, as we press into the Holy Spirit here, I would just encourage you, you know, to... Ask for Jesus to come to you. Ask for the Holy Spirit to come upon you so that you could have an encounter that blows your mind. And it's okay to pray that way. It's okay to pray for a powerful experience. Pray for a fresh outpouring. Pray for a new... We serve a God of abundance. And the beautiful part about this is it's never a one and done unless you want it to be a one and done. Because He is always going to give you more. He is always going to give you more. So, you know, if you are hungry at this point... And in, in, if there's a season of your life that is just dark and desolate and empty, just ask for more. Just ask for more. He is not going to not give you more of him, more of his love. He's not going to not do it. Open yourself up, make yourself vulnerable, and ask for more. There are fresh encounters to be had with the Lord every day. And so, you know, that that's actually the questions in the back. Do you remember when you met Christ, you know? Being baptized and meeting Christ are two different things. They just are. Um, do you, how easy is it for you to share your story of conversion? You know, um, it's it's a beautiful experience. It's one of those milestones in your life, and I encourage you to to press into that and to be able to share it with others. People want to hear. People want to hear that. People want to hear the movement of the Lord, and that we are in such a dark world. People want to see it. People want to see it. How are you still participating in your conversion? That decision is a light switch, but then we walk it out for the rest of our lives. And it has to be just this daily commitment, sometimes an hourly commitment, depending on what's going on in the world, you know? Um, and what role does church have in your relationship with Jesus? So those are the questions. Um, please, 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 let's engage in the comment section. Um, I enjoy so much, you know, Sometimes I can't get back to it till the end of the day, but it is just a refreshment at the end of the day to be able to read and engage with you guys here in the comment section. So please, 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 please engage with us. Um, and you guys engage with each other, you know? Uh, we're, all, we're all in this together, all right? So anyway, happy Friday. Go out and spread some joy today. And I will see you guys in the 